All right, instant answers for customers. So Lex, let's talk about some of the possibilities here. What's exciting about instant answers for customers? Yeah, so exactly. The possibilities is uh, you can change the former chatbot experience to something that is a lot better, a lot more personalized, and that is relying, again, on everything that you have built so far. What was very frustrating, I think, in AI before is that AI was somehow a better if the uh, if this then that, and you know you had that big decision trees, and depending on the people who was asking, then they were crunching the decision tree and trying to to get information from it. This is different now. This is really different. Uh, uh, I have personally been impressed by the results of uh, what generative AI could do. Sometimes. I'm actually even more impressed when I am asking a very precise question. You know, you go to a help center and you ask for uh, a keyword about something that is like the main feature of, uh, of, of, of a service. Then yes, you are going to find the answer. But sometimes you just want like, hey, I'm in this specific scenario and I need to have uh, the answer to that precise question. This is where... AI is very, very powerful because it's going to look into the whole documentation, find what is exactly related to your need, potentially uh, personalize it if it has information on you and make it possible for you to get the, uh, the, the right answer. So possibilities on this are really around uh, not ticket deflection, but providing a better service on the spot, for sure. Yeah, being able to self-solve more and more things, right? Yes. Love it. What about the pitfalls? Where do you see people potentially yeah, going so on here? When something seems too good to be true, it usually is. So here, the issue that you might have is that sometimes generative AI feels magical, like, hey, I can crunch my data and then good, I'm going to have a, everything working uh, uh, of the spot. But that's, that's not true. For it to work well, there are a couple of things that you need. The first thing that you need is good content. Because the answers that you are going to get from AI is going to be as good as the content that you are going to feed it with. One thing that uh, if you look at ChatGPT, one thing that is uh, not working well with ChatGPT is you know what we call the hallucinations, which is basically because ChatGPT wants to have an answer to everything. When they when it doesn't have the answer, it's going to invent it, mm. and that is the way it's been built. But you can build in another way, saying if you don't have the answer, you just say that you don't have the answer. If you do have the answer, though, then you have to show the source, which is, again, something that is different in ChatGPT. It's something where, hey, it is giving you an answer, but you have to trust it that it's the, the right answer. Yeah. It, when you implement it for customers, you can't rely on this. You need to have something that is, here is the answer, here is where I found it. And it, the where I found it might not be only one source. You know, you can have, you can generate uh, a long test that is saying, okay, what I'm saying here, this is the source. What I'm saying there, this is the source. So that people can screen what is uh, written and say, oh, that's what I'm interested in. Because sometimes, you know, you ask a question, but you need to refine it a little bit and all this. And so having the ability to do that uh, is, uh, uh, is very important. So, yeah, one of the pitfalls is definitely thinking that uh, you can have good answers without having good sources and good material. The second thing uh, uh, is you don't want to be in a situation where people ask questions and basically you get them back to an article again. You know, you, you could have, you can generate an answer that is five page long, but then, then just, just get the article that you have crafted and what, what's the point? So, you need to strike the right, right balance, and this is the way AI is implemented uh, with the right prompts and everything, to try to summarize, to have a first, a first answer, a quick answer that people can consume 
If they gain enough, that's good. If they don't, they get to the source. If you are able to get data about the people and feeding it uh, to, to the AI, that's even better. I'm giving you, I'll show you an example, by the way, later about this. But if someone is in a certain situation, a certain role, then some rules are going to apply to them. Why cannot access this feature? If you know that the person, for instance, is on a certain plan, you can tell them it's because you're on this plan. If you don't know anything about that person, you are going to be able to just answer, well, it depends. So this feature is available for this. And then people are still have to look about uh, to everything. So if you are able to uh, grab this information and uh, utilize it to refine the answer, that's a lot better. So one of the pitfalls here would be to get back to generate content that is going to be the same for everyone, because then what's the point?